couple months it's been a rough couple of months um well not rough it's just gonna give you guys a, a quick catch up I think we ended at 20 weeks and I'm just gonna catch you guys all the way up until now and now I'm going into 32 weeks but right now I am going through all of baby girls clothes to get them washed um I got all of her diapers of course I got the cart I still got to put it together though I'm just for some reason, I'm just not in a big rush to do all that, okay? <sighs> okay, there we go. Ugh. So, ugh. sorry, belly is in the way and my bed is so high that I have a hard time getting up. So right now I'm just gonna go through and like take all the tags off and take all the stuff apart to be washed and put up because if you guys remember in my past videos, I was telling you guys that we might be delivering her early. Well, so we are going to be delivering early at 37 weeks and I'm about to be 32 weeks. So in about five weeks, I've been putting everything off to put it together. Um, sh I'm feeling baby move. Of course, I felt her moving early. Um, we are, so what, was, what is happening is um, I went for an entire month of not wanting to film or anything like that because um, the blood thinner that they had me on since I'm allergic to the Lovenox and stuff, come to find out after they did their research for it, because it's very rare, as you guys know, is that I have a higher chance of hemorrhaging, um, dying, <laughs> needing a blood transfusion, and of course, losing my uterus. And um, we've been going through that process of talking about like alternatives and stuff like that because with the Fonda Paranox that I'm on, um, they don't know when to stop it. Cause like if you're on hep um, heparin or Lovenox, they can stop it within 24 hours um, of your labor. And that's usually what they do. Well, with the Fonda Paranox, they don't know when to stop it. There is no definitive information about it because it's that rare. Um, so of course they did their digging and they did all that. And so they basically told me, you know, hey, we really want to try you on the heparin. But let's get you tested like uh, an allergic reaction test. And I did this last month. And usually people, usually they start people on the heparin. If you're allergic to the heparin, then they put you on the Lovenox. And well, it was reversed in my case. They put me straight on the Lovenox. Didn't try me on the heparin. So that is what uh, I went and had my um, allergy test for. They did the prick and then they also did under the skin. And they both came up negative for the 20 to 30 minute mark. So they are hoping that I can do the heparin. And I know that it says that I'm not allergic to it. I totally understand that. But at the same time, yeah, I'm scared to do it still because I'm just, I'm scared. And I don't want to have another allergic reaction like that. But they told me that I already have antibodies for it because of the Lovenox. So I should, if I am allergic to it, I should have the same symptoms to where I get the rash. And then that'll let me know, don't do another shot, leave it alone, call them. Tell them, hey, here's this. Because <clears throat> with like, I still get to do my VBAC. We still get to try that. Um, but with the VBAC, with me being on the heparin, I mean the um, Fonda Paranox or whatever it's called, I have a higher chance of a uterine rupture for my, cesare for my cesarean section. Um, because we are being induced. And if you're being induced, 
uh, your labor is much stronger and your labor pains are way stronger. So that is where we're at. Um, and if I have to get, and okay, so I had to meet with all 12 doctors. I had to meet with anesthesia. I had to meet with, um, uh, coagulation doctors and they all like had a meeting and got together. And the reason why I had to meet with the anesthesiologist and everybody else is because they don't know, like I said, they don't know much about it. And the anesthesiologists straight up said, we will not touch you. Like you will not, we, we will not give you an epidural. We cannot give you any kind of pain relief treatment like that. Because if we go into your spine and you hemorrhage because of the fondoparanox, we just, we're not risking that. So I'm sorry, but as long as you are on that fondoparanox, we cannot help you in any way, shape or form. So if you have the VBAC, you are doing it all natural. And if you have a, your, um, see cesarean section tears open, all we, all that they can do for you is put you out completely and you'll have an emergency C-section. And even that is going to be risky because when they cut into you or anything like that, there is no guarantee that we are going to be able to stop the hemorrhaging or the bleeding, which means you are going to hemorrhage out, uh, possibly die, um, lose your uterus, need a blood transfusion. And in the worst case scenario, like we said, you can die. Um, but if it, uh, like hemorrhaging stuff like that, you're going to be put straight into ICU and just basically telling me the truth, <laughs> scaring me to death, but telling me the truth, which I greatly appreciate because I don't want to beat around the bush and be like, oh yeah, this, this and that. And no, tell me the truth. That's what is a possibility. Let me know. And so they uh, told me everything and I was like, okay, well, let's just uh, do the C-section then. And they're like, that's the thing is you are still high risk like that. That's why we're having meeting with everybody and letting you know, because we want you to know what these risks really are. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's fine. Um, and I totally understand that. Totally get that. So they ordered me to have a, um, they ordered me to have the, the um allergy test and came back negative negative like i said um i'm supposed to start that like as soon as possible since uh we're going to be delivering in about five weeks because i'm about to be 32 weeks and um i'm just like okay you know let's just do this but of course like i said i'm scared um, so I'm waiting until Thursday to try the heparin because I want my husband home with me just in case I do actually have an allergic reaction again, um, that, you know, just the allergist just didn't pick up on right away or it just didn't kick in right away. You know what I mean? Just in case it's wrong. Um, I just want to be on the safe side and, but I'm hoping and I'm praying that I, I'm not allergic to it and that everything works out and that I can do my vaginal birth and I can do all of that. Um, but like I said, we're not setting the date for the induction just yet until after I try the heparin. Once we know for sure that I'm not allergic to the heparin and that it's working for my body, then we're going to set the, uh, induction date. Um, so that is where I'm at with that. So I'm hoping that everything goes good and I'm praying that the heparin works and my body works with it and I can do the vaginal delivery and everything is good. Um, because also because they said that with um, you know how they can, um, give you medication to thicken your blood and stuff. Like if I went, went, like if you go into labor on heparin and 
before like a scheduled C-section or a scheduled induction and you go into labor on your own, they have medicine there to um, counteract the heparin and the Lovenox and the blood thinner that you're on to where you won't have that problem. But they do not have that for the Fonda Paranox. There is something for it, but it is very hard to get and it costs a crap load of money basically and it can take weeks before they even can get it in their hands or get it anywhere um so that's also why they want to try me on the heparin and i'm okay with that of course like i said i'm scared just hoping that it all works out and that i'm just not allergic and i can do what i need to do now if it does, if it turns out that I am, they, they didn't even want to discuss it with me. They were like, we're not discussing that until after we know. And I'm like, but I want to know this. Like, I want to know like what's going to happen. And they're like, well, we're just going to wait until we get all this figured out first. And hopefully we don't have to have that discussion. And I have a feeling that if it does, then I am going to have to give in and not do the VBAC that I wanted. I am going to have to let them just take me straight in for a C-section and just let them do their thing basically because there's nothing that I can, there's just nothing that I can stop or say after that because if it's not working it doesn't work and we're gonna have to discuss that and have to go through that and I probably am just gonna tell them okay just do the c-section and it's still high risk and I'm still gonna be put in that high risk because of it and that's really all I can do like I can't fight them on it I can't it's just not a smart thing to do. <laughs> so if I have to have a C-section, I have to have a C-section. There's no ands, ifs, and buts about it. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Um, contractions have started. Yes, I have the Braxton Hicks of just the tightening of the stomach, things like that. Yes, I have that. But um, actual contractions have started and they started about... Um two weeks ago they started so doing dealing with that and then um and they come mainly like a couple during the day and then they pick up at night and my cervix is still closed and everything like that so it's just practice <laughs> but they're actual contractions um, and then, so, uh, they just don't want me going to labor like on my own. So yeah. Um, let's see. <sighs> the tiredness is back and I haven't even gone through the nesting stage yet. And so like, I have to force it. <laughs> like I have to force myself to go through this nesting stage because I'm not there yet. Like, I'm just, I'm not there. And because it's too early, but I'm like, you only got five more weeks, like soon to be five more weeks, girl, you got to get this done. And I just keep putting it all off. Like I wanted to do the, my, um, breastfeeding cart at like 16 or 20 weeks around that time, but I just haven't done it. Like I haven't, I don't know. I just haven't done it. And so now I have to do it and I have to get this stuff done and I have to get everything washed and put away. And like, this is all I have. Like this right here is what she has. And then I have her um, bedside. I'm doing a bedside nursery. Like I told you guys, well, not really a nursery. It's just going to be her bed. Then a dresser with all of her stuff. And then my pumping cart. That's it. And then, um, I don't want to say minimalist hospital bag because everybody brings like what they want and stuff like that to the hospital. Um, but for me, I actually called ahead of time 
And when I went, when I go up there, um, I ask them for a list and stuff of what they supply. And they basically supply everything. Um, so I don't even have to pack a whole bunch of stuff or go and buy a whole bunch of stuff. Like everybody's like, oh, I'll need your Perry bottle and things like that. They supply a Perry bottle. They supply um, the pads. They supply like shampoo and conditioner. They supply everything for you and they supply everything for the baby. The only thing that I need to bring in is some stuff that makes me comfortable. So I'm, so like in my bag, my hospital bag, all I'm going to be packing and uh, all I'm going to be packing is like, um, we're, I'm planning on doing the cloth diapering, of course. Like, yeah, I got to wash the diapers too and get them all ready as well. Um, so for my hospital bag, let me see. This is my hospital bag. This is all I'm taking. I bought a new bag because I needed a new um I needed a new vacation bag anyways for like our weekends and stuff. And in this bag is going to be mine and baby stuff because I'm not carrying around two things, hauling it in and out of the hospital. That's not happening. And of course, that's just me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I won't be doing that. Like, that's just not happening. Um, so in that bag, I'm just going to be packing... Um, my depends and when i say depends is these right here i have been using these for a for like my last four births after having uh my kids these are amazing <laughs> so i'm gonna be packing some of these um i highly recommend these for birth after birth um so I'm just going to be packing some of those. I'm going to be packing my own uh, shampoo and conditioner, uh, my lotion, and my makeup for like the leaving and stuff like that. Um, and then snacks for my husband. And then uh, two of my pajamas that I got for baby girl uh, because... We are going to be um, cloth diapering. And these are what she is going to be in for the first like three months of her life <laughs> are the pajamas that look like this. Because it makes it way easier to get in there to her diapers. Like these are my favorite. I had them with my boy. With my last boy, I had him with Penelope and Ruthann. I absolutely love these pajamas because it is easy access to diapers. <laughs> and even with regular diapers, easy access. And plus, like I said, we're not going anywhere for three months. We are in the house. So, uh, so I'll be bringing only two of those. And then um, I'm not going to bring any of her cloth diapers because I do not start cloth diapering until after she's pooped out all the meconium, until the baby's pooped out all the meconium, and that's about three or four days, or two, yeah, about three, three days. So she will be in um, diapers until all of that's flushed out of her system, because that is very hard to get out of cloth diapers. Like, if they poop the meconium in there, like, that's like a hand scrub, a soak, like, you really got to get in there to get that tar out. And it's literally like what it is. It's like tar. So, um, and I'm not even going to be buying a bag of diapers. Why? Because the hospital supplies those diapers. Well, um, so uh, the bag of diapers that is in the hospital after you have the baby, those are yours to take home. And that's all we're going to need. So I'm not buying a bag of diapers because I don't have to. Um... And then, like, 
like I said, with the Perry bottle, I'm not even going to buy that. And like everybody's talking about that free to mom or free mom, those free mom kits or whatever they're called that you buy. I have nothing against them. I think they are great for first time moms, things like that. But I'm not paying no $40, $60 just to get a like four or five, like five or six pairs of their uh, postpartum boy shorts underwear things that are not going to last you for as long as you need them to. Um, three or like a couple of pads, they're not going to last you as long as you need them to. Like, I hate to say that, but they're not. Yeah, they're, it's convenient because it's a kit and it gives you an idea of what you need. But you are still going to have to go out and get the rest of those supplies. Because those kits gives you an idea of what you need. It is like a starter kit and you need to buy the rest of the stuff that you're going to need. Um, it's just a waste of money to me. Uh, like I said, I have nothing against them. I think they're great kits for first time moms. Go out and, you know, do you. But for me, that's just a waste of money and I'm not even going to waste my time on stuff like that. Um, the Perry bottle, yeah, it's convenient because you can actually hold it and has a spout that comes out. I could see the use for that, but I just am not going to spend the money on that when I can get the, when I can get the free one from the hospital and I can get an extra one as well for free. Um, so I'm not going to waste my time on that. Um. The pads and stuff, the whole kit that they give you, awesome. Um, I didn't buy any tucks because I don't use tucks. Um, I don't use that stuff. So I don't, I just don't buy it. This is my ninth child, 10th delivery. Because <laughs> as you know, we had a child die after, uh, uh, our daughter died after birth. Um, so yeah, I just, that's just stuff that I don't need. Um, and the only time that I actually needed Tux or the, uh, the dermal, the dermal spray stuff in the blue can was with my first son, actually, because he actually, I think I had third or fourth degree tears and stitches with him. He tore me from vagina to butt. Like I, I tore all the way through with him and I had to, I remember I got like, eight or 10 stitches inside of the anus on the top. And then I got like eight or 10 stitches inside the vagina and then like eight or 10 going down. Cause he tore me all the way through. Like that was the worst birth, but of course that was my first. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the only time that I ever had to use that stuff. And then, um, let's see. Like, uh, Packing, packing, maybe like a change of clothes for my husband, snacks, a binky maybe for baby girl, and my and a pump because I'm going to be pumping as soon as I'm able to, as soon as baby's out, whether it's a C-section or vaginal birth or vaginal birth, which I want, um, straight to the pumping. Uh, put, I'm gonna put baby on the breast and then pump. Um, Let's see, a bottle, because she's not gonna be having formula unless it's absolutely necessary. Oh, and I'm not using, um, we don't use plastic bottles or anything like that. I'll show you the bottles that I use. So I use glass bottles, the Dr. Brown round glass bottles, like the old style ones. Absolutely love these. Um, I do take it apart though. I'm not even going to lie. And I take out this blue piece cause I don't use it. Um, but these ones we just got, 
Um, and then I use the glass um, Life Factory bottles. And uh, But first, I have a bunch of the small ones of the Life Factory bottles and a bunch of the small Dr. Brown uh, glass bottles like this, the old-fashioned ones. Um, absolutely adore the glass bottles. Um, I do sometimes pump into them, um, but I find that I'll use the... Uh, if I don't... Well, I have plenty this time around, so I don't think I'll be doing that. But uh, in my previous pumpings, I always had four to six of the plastic bottles uh, just to pump into. But I have enough of these to wear the big long ones like this to where I can pump straight into the glass bottles. So, yeah, but I'll have those plastic ones on hand just to be on the safe side of that. And then... Let's see if I can get up here on this bed. Yeah, watch me get up on this bed. <laughs> but let's see if I can get up here so I can show you the belly. Because <sighs> my bed is really high. <sighs> Woo! But let's see if I can. <sighs> <laughs> So this is the belly, huge belly. Like she has just made her entrance into this world. Like she is just put out and she is everywhere, like everywhere. Um, and she has taken up all that space. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's my update. And I will also update very soon because I'm going to put uh, together the video, like I said, of all of her stuff doing the uh, cart, putting all her stuff together, getting everything organized here for her. So, yeah, so that's my update, you guys. Like, it's just been a lot and stressful and I think by the next video, we should know um, what day we are going to be induced on. Um, and just pray and hope that I'm not allergic, <laughs> even though we got the allergy test. I had both of them done. And it said I'm not allergic to it. So fingers crossed that my body it works with my body. And I don't, all this worry just goes away. Yeah, just let's pray, 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 pray. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what, like I said, that's my update. And about five weeks and she will be here. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, we will know what day. Woo, it's coming quick, real quick. And I told you it was going to be at 37 weeks. Yeah, because we are taking her out at 37 weeks. Whether she wants to come out or not, she's being taken out. <laughs> like, like she's getting a true eviction notice. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, like I said, I'll keep you guys updated. The next video will be an update. And then also me putting everything together because now I have to do it. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing great. Thanks.